Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. I hope you're having an amazing day. We've got an awful lot of stuff to get through in this video, so let's kick things right off concerning AMD's RDNA 3 architecture, because it may well incorporate machine learning in the form of a chiplet. And honestly, if this is true, it could be an extremely worrying thing for NVIDIA going forward with the RTX 40 launch. Let's get right into it, right after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So for those who haven't been keeping up, just a quick bit of backstory. RDNA 1 was a very important architecture from AMD. However, there were a couple of weaknesses. At the time, it wasn't as fast as NVIDIA's competitors, such as the RTX 2080 Ti. The second thing is it was missing features like variable rate shading and hardware-based ray tracing. Now, at the time, it wasn't such a big deal because there wasn't exactly a plethora of titles on PC which sported ray tracing. But, you know, now that time's getting on a little bit, it's arguable that it does kind of hurt, especially considering FSR does work on it. So, you know, if you had like a 5700 XT, for example, you could play quite a lot of titles with FSR and ray tracing enabled. But, of course, you can't because the architecture doesn't support it. But, in my opinion, it was still a very good architecture from AMD and made a lot of very important steps forward. The most important of those, of course, is that it focused on gaming performance. And then this was kicked into massive high gear with RDNA 2. It took the building blocks which were established with RDNA 1, turned them up to 11 in terms of performance, but perhaps most importantly, incorporating all of these additional features, including hardware-based ray tracing. And as of the time I'm recording this, there isn't really a clear winner between RDNA 2 and RTX 30. It really depends on the performance tier that you're looking at for A, and B, of course, with the market as it is, you're just going to buy anything you can, because you're not going to be like, oh no, I'm only able to buy a 6800 XT. You're going to be really happy with the card, like it's a bloody good card. And also, even if the market was in perfect condition, and you could Disneyland and walk into the store, there are a ton of arguments that you can make between the two architectures. RX 6800 XT, for example, has more VRAM, but it doesn't have such good ray tracing. RTX 30 has better uh, has a DLSS performance, but RDNA 2 is arguably more power efficient and is ridiculously overclockable. I mean, it just overclocks just to hell and back. It's kind of actually insane. So, you know, you can make all of those arguments all day long, but RDNA 3 is a very different beast indeed because it could be the first time AMD actually has performance leadership. Now, let's just be honest. This has been a tale as old as time. AMD will get the performance edge. AMD will get the performance edge. But there is one reason to think this is probably true at this point, and that is that they will release an architecture which is going to be MCM. And NVIDIA's RTX 40, aka Lovelace, is going to be, well, not. And, you know, the rumors I've been hearing is that at minimum, and I've put them out several times, it's going to be at minimum 2.5 times faster, but more likely three times faster than the 6900 XT. What is a little more ambiguous is whether that's rasterization performance or not. I've been told by three people that it is, and another person tells me, tells me, excuse me, possibly not, it could just be the T-flop number. I'm leaning towards it being game performance because more people have told me that at this point. Either way, even if it is T-flops, it's kind of bonkers, honestly. And yeah, Navi 31 and all of the other SKUs are going to be ridiculously, ludicrously fast. Um, whereas NVIDIA's Hopper, oh, sorry, NVIDIA's Lovelace, excuse me, is probably going to be around 2.4 to 2.5 times faster. But I do believe it's probably going to have some advantages like ray tracing, which I suspect NVIDIA will be doubling down on. However, 
there is a very interesting rumour that has popped up from Grayman on Twitter. I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video, of course. The bottom line is he believes that there's going to be a chiplet or machine learning capabilities at the least on RDNA free silicon. Now there's a few caveats here. The first is that A, this could be untrue, although Grayman has a really good track record. And to be fair, actually, I reported a couple of times that I'd actually been hearing about this um, myself quite a while ago, but then I stopped reporting it because one of my sources told me it's probably untrue. So I want to give you guys that caveat. The second thing is we don't know what the capabilities of machine learning are. Because, you know, like, what is a machine learning chiplet? It's a very ambiguous statement. Now, I believe that there is a ton of scope for AMD to really leverage this for a future version of FSR. Let's just be totally honest. Just about everyone and their grandmother at this point is working on upsampling technology like i i swear to i swear i just i'm expecting to go to the local bloody supermarket and then you know they try to sell me like upsampling technology seriously it is actually getting kind of ridiculous so yeah sony are working on their own various technologies microsoft of course are working on them unreal engine <laughs> nvidia intel it seems to be everywhere and this is obviously kind of a good thing for us as gamers because at the end of the day and not only does it benefit us, you know, for the, who are buying the highest end components, those who are buying lower end components, also for laptop owners, you don't necessarily have the luxury of pulling like 700 watts from the wall as well. So, you know, lighter devices and all of that. So I do believe it's quite likely if this does happen, that it could be leveraged for things like, you know, upsampling. But let's just be honest, guys, machine learning could do a crap ton of different things. It's very easy to say upsampling as you know the use case but really and truly ml can do a crap ton of things everything from better physics in games all the way to better ai and you know it, it could do a lot of stuff and it'll be interesting to see how all of this goes as i mentioned a moment ago guys i have been hearing that amd are working on fsr2 and you know nvidia have worked on uh, have been working on dlss3 and both are massive improvements over what we currently have at the end of the day It'll be a very curious state of affairs. I think AMD are possibly um, in perhaps less of a pressure situation than NVIDIA here because NVIDIA obviously, to a degree, I think DLSS is... It's going to be really interesting to see how DLSS and XESS coexist. I don't know. Um, my gut feeling is that NVIDIA could open it up to different architectures, but if it's running on an NVIDIA architecture... It benefits from the tentacles, which is semi how in, uh, Intel are doing things with XCSS. Obviously, it's running different instructions that like DP4A or whatever, depending on whether it's an Intel or a not well, I should say an ARC architecture or non ARC architecture. That's a really clumsy, that's a wow, that's a clumsy saying ARC architecture, architecture, arc, yeah, whatever. So, yeah, um, I'm going to be very interested to see how all of this plays out. Speaking of things which are going to be playing out, it's a very amusing state of affairs, but also a very cool state of affairs, depending on the perspective you're looking at this from. And that actually concerns NVIDIA's Hopper. So NVIDIA are working on multiple architectures at once, which is obviously, you know, normal during bring up processes of different architectures and roadmaps. One of those, of course, is Lovelace, which is RTX 40. But for servers anyway, it seems that Hopper is going to be the architecture of choice. Now, personally, I have been told that Hopper or a variant thereof will eventually come to gamers. But for the purpose of this video, yeah, we're going to focus squarely on the highest end Hopper. So um, another person who has a pretty good track record is Cup 7 Kimmy on uh, Twitter. And I'll leave a link in the video description to their account. Bottom line is, they put out a tweet to say that Hopper could have a die, which is the largest, essentially, <laughs> that we've ever seen, like, under a uh, thousand mm squared, which is ginormous. Now, we have seen dies previously, which are 800-ish mm squared, but then after that, they actually put out another tweet, which says, mm, actually, I was kind of just rounding things up, essentially, it's going to be under... Uh, 900 mm squared but there are a crap ton of headlines which are running the 1000 now uh, yeah it's an interesting it's interesting with hopper and we'll get into why in just a second 
just a second but i also want to say that you know there is actually a rectical limit on when you're well, basically when you're just producing silicon it's quite complicated um and i'll try to remember the link to a couple of articles on why the how and why and how the you know, are limits on this and if you want to know you can kind of read it but bottom line is there are finite limits on how big you can make silicon and you can't go to like a thousand mm squared it's you know it's a reticle limit it's not a rectum limit you can't stretch it basically beyond a certain point and it's like it's going to be interesting because i mean you know this is where things get a little weird actually so ga100 which is ampere and it's the highest end uh, ampere chip it's basically for data centers it's uh, 826 mm squared which is again quite ginormous but according to copity uh gh100 is a huge single die less than 1000 mm but again he kind of clarified a little bit but they also then state that uh, gh100 does not have an mcm iteration so it does seem like actually there are mcm designs for the hopper uh chips but it's not gh100 it could be like gh102 or whatever honestly it's kind of a weird situation um that we're seeing ourselves in with hopper i'm curious to see what the final performance is of this chip um <laughs> I suspect it's going to be absolutely ridiculous. Like, I have been told that Hopper's performance is actually ridiculous when it comes to things like, well, data center tasks, basically. At the end of the day, AMD now are, com are competitive here. And you need to remember as well that Intel are getting into the GPU game. And what's really curious, actually, is that now Intel and another news story have basically said that they want to start shipping out millions of GPUs to PC gamers, which is great for, well, PC gamers. <laughs> but, um, you know, I will be curious to see which SKUs they are referring to. Now, ARC itself, um, the highest performance tier ones anyway, is around RTX 3070 Ti levels of the performance, which is, you know, again, pretty good. And if, uh, if Intel can en masse provide silicon, which is that kind of performance, or, you know, 3060, let's say 3060 Ti to 3070 Ti, if they can deliver enough SKUs at those performance tiers with good enough drivers, which I, I know, I keep stressing the drivers in multiple videos here, but let's face it, they are important. I think Intel are going to win the hearts of a lot of gamers because at the end of the day, that is important. A couple of negatives, though, on this story. The first is that Intel have basically said, I think it's Ranja Kodori, that they are not going to be limiting mining performance on their GPUs. Um, however, that doesn't necessarily mean that the mining performance is going to be good. Um, you know, if, if it sucks, then it doesn't matter if they limit it. I don't know if it's going to suck. We don't have benchmarks of that. I don't imagine it will be bad, but again, I haven't seen the benchmarks, I haven't run the benchmarks, I don't know. The second thing is that mining has, well, it's not as profitable now, and, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of prices at the moment, GPUs are getting lower. Uh, I wouldn't exactly say they're MSRP, but they're doing better, and, you know, the reality is that, you know, if I were mining now, um, or at least, you know, mining for Ethereum, I mean, I don't know, maybe if you're a hardcore miner, you'll feel differently. I don't know. Uh, you know, I don't run a mining farm. But, I mean, just my personal take on it is like, Ethereum's crashed at the moment in pricing. Electricity prices, especially in the UK and other regions, have gone up a lot. Like, if if we go to proof of stake, which is like supposed to be June, July, again, assuming that's not delayed, like, dude, are you even going to get your money back on the cards if you cough up, like, two times MSRP or even 1.5 times MSRP for, like, a 6800 XT or whatever? I don't know. Um, I think with the 3080s or any card that is no longer uh, LHR, I think you can get, like, 70 or, what was it, 70, 75%, something like that, of uh, the non-limited hash rate performance. So, let's say the... I don't know you probably get like what 75 80 mhs from a 30 80 but if you're coughing up like i don't know 
1200 1500 bucks for it, will you get your money back? I don't know. I suppose you could always argue that you could mine something else afterwards, but with cryptocurrencies at the moment, I mean, to be fair, it's not just cryptocurrencies, as a lot of people know, it's everything. Um, and the last point with the ARK situation, uh, for my mind anyway, Intel have a lot of goodwill getting into the market with, with GPUs because, quite frankly, I think they are picking a really good time. The best time that Intel could have launched, honestly, is at the peak of mining. You know, if they could have launched and limited the mining performance of their cards and launched in good volume. <laughs> oh my god, dude. They would have just, like... People would have, like literally ran up to Raja Kodori and hugged him. Um, as it is, they are still getting in at a pretty good time because PC gaming, let's just be honest, it's really popular right now. So, anyway, I think that's just about it for this video. I feel like I've rambled enough. I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.